Euro NCAP, or the European New Car Assessment Programme, is the organisation that tells us exactly how safe new cars are. They've been crashing and analysing cars since 1997, publishing their findings so that folk like us can choose the safest possible chariot for our families. Today I've been given unprecedented behind-the-scenes access to an official crash test. I'm going to see the technology and the equipment involved, and I'm going to watch this brand new Honda CRV face a pretty grim, pretty messy death. But first, let's look at the bigger picture. Before a car can go on sale, it has to pass crash tests as part of the European whole vehicle type approval process. But as they're a simple pass or fail, buyers can't use them to find out if one car is safer than another. That's where Euro NCAP comes in. Their tests are tougher, and instead of a pass or a fail, they publish star ratings alongside marks that reveal the ability of a car to protect occupants, pedestrians and children. These tests, they're actually voluntary, but they're so crucial in proving a car's safety record that all the big car manufacturers take part. Today, Honda has donated this CRV for Euro NCAP to crash for them, knowing full well that if it scores well, it's going to help appeal to more buyers and sell more cars. So today is a pretty big deal. The CRV, which is built in the UK, is being tested at Thatcham in England, one of several NCAP facilities across Europe. Each car is put through three different tests a side impact, a pole impact, and, like today's test of the CRV, a frontal impact. Alex Thompson and his team have spent a week preparing the car. It's a 60-40 uh, um, oh. offset front impact at 40 miles an hour. So 40% of the front of the car is actually hitting the deformable barrier. This is, represents the front of another car. This is, yeah, it's made from an aluminium honeycomb. So it's got a certain amount of crush strength in, in, uh, in one direction. The front impact test uses four crash test dummies, two adults, two children. They look pretty basic, but this set is worth around 300,000 quid. They've got an awful lot of instrumentation inside them that tells us a lot of things about how a, an occupant would have fared in, a, in one, of our, one of the crash tests. I was looking at the shoes of the dummies earlier. Were well, the yes. sort of shoes you get given if you went to prison. Apparently these are set by the industry. You have to wear these shoes. You have to give these shoes to the dummies, and they're apparently really expensive. The sensors in each car record up to 20,000 data samples per second. For this test, we have, I think, about 104 channels of data to tell us how the car has decelerated, uh, how the seat belts, the, the force that's been put through the seat belts during the, during the crash. Yeah. The dummies are so sensitive, we have to wait for the test lab to reach the right temperature before the crash can take place. The reason why he's got white tape on his face and all the other faces is because they're going to paint some makeup on all of the dummies so that when the airbags are deployed at the front here, you can see exactly where the face is coming into contact with the bag. You can just track where it's all been. So this is the last thing before uh, doomsday? Pretty much. It's now time to decide just how safe a new Honda CRV really is. The car will be propelled by an electric winch at exactly 40 miles per hour. 10 seconds. This is the first time Euro NCAP have allowed a TV crew behind the scenes of their work. So, you're in for a bit of a treat. OK, this is it. I'm going to go and have a look. Should we go and have a look? Let's go and have a look. We're off to open the doors of the car, because one of the most important things post-accident is to make sure that you can get in and out of the car, that the doors operate as they should. Alex is going to open the driver's door, which is obviously taking the brunt of the impact. 43.4. The carnage has generated over 50 gigabytes of data that's downloaded from the car and sent to the Euro NCAP headquarters in Brussels for analysis. I'm not going to touch it because it's a sort of 
scene of scientific investigation, but you can see where the shins have touched the, the glove compartment. And the, you see the airbag, the driver's airbag there? It's a pretty good view of where the eyebrows, the nose bridge and the chin have touched. Alid Williams is going to tell me what this mess means. So if we look here, for example, the, uh, the front end, of course, is pretty, pretty stoved in. Yep. Uh, there's a big uh, member here, which has obviously absorbed a lot of energy. Yep. Uh, so that's done OK. But the really important thing, I would say, is to look at the passenger compartment. You can see that there's very little deformation of this passenger compartment. So this part here has moved rearwards very little. Yep. Um, this has maintained its shape. Uh, from what we can see, the airbags seem to have deployed uh, correctly during the, the impact. Yeah. 15, 16 years ago, this would have really folded up. Now, you can see that it's really held its shape extremely well. So the whole passenger yeah. compartment is, is virtually intact. After eight weeks of forensically analysing this crash and the others it went through, Euro NCAP delivered their verdict on the CRV. It was awarded a maximum possible score of five stars, with high marks for occupant protection, though some room for improvement on pedestrian care. Seeing such destructive forces is always shocking, but this level of analysis is also massively reassuring. Carnage like this is created purely to ensure the cars we buy are as safe as possible.